Jeremy S. Cook here, and my project this week is actually something that you're hearing right now. It's actually a diffuser that sits to my left as I record this video, and in theory, it's actually diffusing some of the sound, making it sound even better. In reality, it doesn't work that well, but it looks pretty awesome and actually glows in the dark too. So if you, uh, if you like how it looks, follow along to see how I made it. First, I drew this out on Fusion 360. If you're thinking this is a bit of overkill, probably was, but my intention here was to make it out of a half inch sheet of MDF. I cut down the outer side so it, I'd kind of have a, a flat hill that goes up from the sides. In the end, this didn't really make much of a difference either because the randomness of the triangles, which I arranged with an Arduino Uno and an LCD shield, really cover that up. So if you want to cover a curve, random triangles is a great way to do it. Nonetheless, cut that out, stuck it on with some double-sided tape, and let my router get to work. Got to make sure that it's on nice and tight. I was pleasantly surprised with how well it holds on there. The double-sided tape really works well, even though you got all this a CNC router just running over it and cutting up all kinds of kind of material. Looking good there, I'm sucking the, the dust up with the, uh, my custom 3D printed dust shoe. I'll put a link to that in the description. Other thing was I had to cut out all these triangles, 216 of them in fact, uh, 12, 12 by 18 it was. I didn't even think of the number of triangles that I would need beforehand, but that's definitely one of the reasons this project took so long. I got this idea from a, a similar project that I saw on Reddit, and I think they used half inch wood instead of the, the inch, the nominal inch that I used here. I'm sure that one took forever. Nonetheless, I got it all done. I got all these triangles laid out, and as it was, I guess I could have just glued them down like this, but I wanted to make it not look nice because I wasn't sure how well it would diffuse sound had to serve some purpose. And in the end, I separated it out into groups of three and then dyed them all after I, after I scraped them with the file, of course. Now I say groups of three, actually one of the groups, the red group, I took out a few of them and dyed them black and a glow in the dark color as well. So that was kind of like a special accent that you'll see in just a little bit. Rather than painting each one or wiping them with the rag, I actually dipped all of them in the the stain and then put them in a bag to kind of kind of shake them up and try to get it all and you're nicely in the cracks and stuff. I saw this in a Pocket 83 video, which I think, I, I didn't watch it again, but I think he actually put the stain in there and stained it right from the bag. That really didn't work as well as I'd hoped, so maybe the next time we're on the Creativity Podcast together we can discuss. Dried the excess off, can't leave too much on there, and then after that, I also had kind of a yellow stain and a black stain. The black works really well. This It's like an ebony stain that makes it nice and dark. This is the yellow stain right here. It was just kind of hilarious how small the container was compared to the, the red stain. I'd recommend usually getting the big container if you have the choice. Since this project laid around for so long, since like 2019, it just took me so long to get this project done. It warped a little bit and I tried to correct it a little bit too aggressively. So after gluing that on and covering it with the random triangles, you couldn't even notice this whatsoever. So I wanted to make these triangles truly random or at least pseudo random. I wrote a little Arduino script for this that would generate a random number for the position and the actual color that you put on as you go through. So all you have to do is just press one of these buttons and it gives you like black, yellow, down, left, right. So the uh, left and right signify the position of the triangles and the the colors signify what color. You just kind of go through from the bottom and choose that. And you know, it doesn't really matter how you do it. It's just just as long as you're consistent. So basically, it generates a random random number, and then based on that, if the random color is less than 73, it says black. Less than 145. If if not, less than 145 yellow. Less than 203 red, and else it'll just do a glowing effect. Same sort of thing with the position up, down, left, right, except it's a different random number. So basically, basically it takes a human element out of this, which I've heard that humans are fairly bad at creating random numbers. They'll make, make up numbers that aren't really random. And apparently that's how the IRS detects fraud sometimes. So I don't cheat on my taxes, so I guess I don't have to worry about that. Nonetheless, looks uh, looks pretty good. 
and I was, I was happy to see that everything held on there even though I didn't let it dry for probably as long as I needed to. Yep, looks good. So with that done, it was time to mount it on the wall. Use this handy hand drill for drilling into the drywall. It's great for that since you don't have to have a power source besides yourself, of course. Put the screw in, hung it on the wall. And look at that, it looks nice. It looks like something from an old school video game like, like Star Fox or something. Nice and geometric. So whether or not it works for sound diffusion, it does work as an interesting interesting piece. Nonetheless, if you're wondering how I know it doesn't work that well, I actually set up a little, little sound tent for this on the left. The idea was that it would only measure the sound that's bounced off of either the wall or the diffuser. So let's see how that works with the Creativity Podcast. You can see it ramping up 52, 53, and it gets up to 57.9 decibels. Welcome to Creativity, the podcast where art and engineering collide. My name is Jeremy S. Cook. I'm your host for the show. And we so if we restart that sequence again with a diffuser in place, it actually gets up to 56.4 decibels. So not a huge difference, a little Welcome over one decibel, but I guess that's a logarithmic scale, so maybe it sounds better than that. And I guess if you had this all around your room, maybe it'd be a good thing, but that would take forever. It does glow in the dark, which is awesome. And it looks even better if you take a long exposure photo. So the question is, is this project a success? I mean, it's hanging up on my wall, diffusing the audio just a tiny bit, and it looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with the results, so I guess it'll stay there for a little while longer. Plus, it's nice to get a project knocked off that I've had on the list since 2019. Hope you enjoyed the project. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up, subscribe, bell, share, leave a comment. You know, all the stuff you're supposed to say at the end of any YouTube video. Thanks so much for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook, signing off.